This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and thunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have Forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came. And standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. He replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Beloved family, of God, grace and peace to you from God, our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. When I was in seminary, I had a pastoral care professor open a lecture one evening with a question that I still think about all these years later. He says, what do you picture in your mind when you hear the word family? It's a question I'd pose to you this morning. What do you picture in your head when you hear the word family? Is it the the classic mother, father, two kids, two-story house, white picket fence? Everyone out in a nicely manicured front lawn in brand new clothes like a Sears catalog? Right? Sure, that can be family. Yeah. You picture a a family of three, four generations around a, a table together? Sure. Yeah, that can be family. Think about what about you know folks living together at a, a care center or Hadley House or the, the different houses in Perm living. That be family? Sure. I love that the care centers we call them houses, right? You live together in a house, Hadley House, the different houses at Perm living, these dwelling places where we dwell together to cultivate that kind of family type relationship. Yeah, just this next week, uh, Meg and I are taking a vacation with our kids, and we're meeting up with two other families who I went to seminary with, families uh, who have become like family to, to us. Anyone have friends who are like family to them? Yeah. We even combine our last names when we talk about the trips that we take. Right, we're the Claps, the Pews, and the Warzala Dumkeys, but in all of our calendars, it's the Pewzala Clapkey vacations. Right, combining those family names together, this intentional way of kind of forming a family among ourselves. There are many ways that we can think of family, how many ways we can use familial language to describe larger groups. Right? Church family. Teams or, or clubs use words like brotherhood or sisterhood. Right? Sometimes when we talk about our co-workers as a sort of work family. Right? Even professional sports teams. 
right, can use the, the term brotherhood, sisterhood, things like that. The, the Liverpool soccer team over in England has a team motto that's you never walk alone. Right? These kind of bonds that come with being associated with one another. Sometimes we form these bonds of kinship or family around shared interests. Sometimes we form them in addition to our family of origin, right? Or sometimes we form them because for whatever reason, we found we don't belong with our family of origin anymore. For some, the experience of family is positive and supportive, For others, it comes with negative memories. It comes with memories of abuse or neglect. I'd venture a guess that for a lot of us, when we think of family, it's a mixture of positive and negative, right? The good with the bad. Companionship and sometimes conflict. Fulfillment and sometimes disappointment. And often everything in between. So when Jesus breaks open this traditional understanding of family, it's understandable that some people are hurt by it. Some people, the breaking open of family can be bad news. Because it speaks of this rupture in relationship. And if you're feeling good and you're feeling comfortable and set in your family, the last thing you want is disruption. And yet to those who are experiencing any sort of homelessness, whether it's physical or relational or social or spiritual, the breaking open of family is an opportunity to be welcomed in from the cold. There's a woman named Sarah Cunningham who started an organization called Free Mom Hugs. And she goes around with a, a team of people all around the country, all around the world, to different communities of folks who've been estranged from their families or cast out from their circles of belonging and is simply a caring presence. Someone to give free mom hugs. (laughs) They give hugs, but they also give encouragement and care. They give people who have been cast out a new circle of belonging that they can join. I think it's important that we see when we read Scriptures like our gospel lesson today, sometimes Jesus may just be calling out the ruptures and the fractures that already exist within our family, even if we don't want to talk about them all that much. I love that this gospel reading was paired all the way back with this reading from Genesis 3. Right? All it takes is one question from God. There are two humans on the face of the earth. And all it takes is one question from God. He said, oh no, this woman that you gave to me, (laughs) she told me to eat the apple. It takes one question from God, and there's a break. Right? I think sometimes when Jesus speaks of the ruptures that happen within relationships, it's just naming things that are already there. But I think what's important for us to is that Jesus breaks apart the bonds of family not to destroy, but to rebuild. To build up so that it includes the entire world. He knows that in order for the circle of belonging to expand, he needs to do away with the dividing walls that we use to keep some people in and some people out. The dividing walls that we put up when we say, oh no, this person you gave to me... (laughs) She caused me to do that. He caused me to do that. Oh no, it's not my fault. Because if any vestige of those walls that we erect between us still stands, God knows that we humans will find any reason to gather around those walls and build them back up. We're really good at building walls. The crowd basically calls Jesus' family to the house. The crowd's sick of dealing with him. They don't know what to do with him. They call his family out. They say, you need to talk some sense into this man. Basically call him to to do a welfare check. They worry he's possessed by a demon. 
And that has been the source of his ability to heal. Right? They all have different theories about which demon and the ways in which this is affecting the community. And when his family gets there, they can't get in the house because the crowds are packed in all around. It says they're packed so close no one can eat. I've been in some packed rooms before, but have you ever been in a room so packed you couldn't eat? It is packed in there. I wonder what it was like for Mary to walk up to this house and to hear these words of Jesus. Mary knows what God is up to in the ministry of Jesus. She knows that confronting the powers that be and ushering in the kingdom of God is tricky business. But I wonder if they were able to catch eyes when he said, Who are my mother and my brothers? I wonder if they both had a sense of knowing it was coming. of knowing that this circle needed to expand. I wonder if they had lumps in their throat actually hearing him say it out loud. Because those words of rupture are never easy. At the same time, I can't imagine what it must have felt like to be inside the house with Jesus that day. I know well, perhaps you do too, that hunger to belong. You're looking around wondering, where do I fit? Where is someone safe and loving that we can belong to? I wonder about who those people are in our community or in our world who are on the outside looking in today. And I wonder how the Holy Spirit might be calling us as the body of Christ to widen the circle of belonging as Jesus does in our reading. Whoever does the will of God is Jesus' new criteria for belonging in God's family. Loving God and loving our neighbor is the new resume for belonging. Full stop. Who are those folks around Purim who are left out of the circle of belonging? Who in Minnesota is being left out? Who across our country? Who around our world? There's so many people who are being left out for so many reasons. We're good at building walls between us. Maybe you're feeling left out right now, too. Maybe you're feeling a little bit outside the circle. And if that's you, I want you to be assured that the exact same promise from children's time this morning exists for you too. You will always belong to God. And you will always belong in the body of Christ. I believe that the Holy Spirit is calling us anew in this Pentecost season to widen our circle of belonging. To not only make space for people around God's table, but to actively seek those who are feeling like they don't belong and to invite them in. To make space for others. Debbie Thomas reminds us yet again of this beautiful promise in today's Gospel. She says, yes, Jesus divides the house. And yes, that process hurts. But he doesn't divide it to make us homeless. He divides it to rebuild. To make it more spacious, more welcoming, and more beautiful. His will be a house of healing for the whole world. And for that we can indeed say thanks be to God. Amen.